So now we're going to look at interpreting a rate of change in a problem. So in related rates problems, statements are made about rates of change of certain quantities. Let's look at how to interpret such statements. So for each of the following, draw a picture, assign a letter to each quantity that is changing over time, and then interpret the statement about the rate of change in terms of symbols. So the first few bits are ones that we just did in this, the last video. The, the previous examples were about drawing a picture and assigning letter quantities that are changing over time. And then there we found a relationship. Here we're looking at how to interpret the statement about a rate of change. So for example, after fueling up at a gas station, a car drives west at 50 kilometers per hour. So how can we draw a picture representing this? Well, here's the road on which our car is going to travel. Here's our gas station. So maybe a little fuel pump here, something like this. So this is our gas station. And then the car drives west at 50 kilometers per hour. So it's going, there's the you know, little wind coming off the tail end. So that's the direction it's driving in. And it's driving in that direction at 50 kilometers per hour. Okay, so there's a quick little diagram. I need to assign a letter name to each quantity that's given. Well, the distance the car is from the gas station is going to be important for us. So we'll call that x. So let x be the distance from car to gas station. So you may wonder why we needed to introduce x here. So why do we need to do that? Well, the point is, is in the question, we are given this rate of change, 50 kilometers per hour. That's the speed at which the car is traveling. So that's the rate of change in its position, or in other words, the derivative of its position. And so I needed to put the position in here in order to talk about its derivative. So now 50 kilometers per hour is the derivative of x with respect to t. And so that's 50. And the thing to note here is that x is increasing. Right? As the car moves, it's getting further and further away. So the derivative is plus 50 or positive 50. So sometimes we'll have to make that decision when we're given a rate of change. We'll have to interpret it in terms of the derivative of the variable we've got. Is it negative or positive? Right, so that's how we interpret our rate of change in this question. So let's look at the next one. So we've got water being pumped out of a rectangular tank at two cubic meters per minute. So we've got a rectangular tank here. Got some back lines in here. Okay, and we've got some water in the tank. And so maybe this is the water level. And so we've got some volume of water in the tank. So let V be the volume of water in the tank. You may say, well, why did I know to introduce a variable v in here to represent the volume? Well, the point is, is if I look at my rate of change, it's two cubic meters per minute. So right there, cubic meters per minute, I know this is a volume. And so this quantity is a rate of change in the volume. So this is really the derivative, or related to the derivative of the volume. I'm not going to say it is the derivative because there's something that I have to sort of make, make note of when I do that. So what I've got here is that the derivative of the volume with respect to time, so how does volume change in time? Well, the water is being pumped out of the tank. If V is the volume of the water in the tank, then the volume is decreasing. The volume is decreasing. Water's coming out of the tank. So the derivative of the volume is negative 2 cubic meters per minute. All right, so that's one thing we need to be careful of. When we're given a rate of change in a question, we have to decide 
once I've introduced a quantity in here, how is the derivative of that quantity related to the rate of change given in the question? We might have to introduce an extra sign because in this case the water is being pumped out of the tank, so the volume is decreasing. Let's look at the next example. A baseball player is running from home plate to first base. When the player is exactly halfway to first base, the distance from the player to second base is changing at a rate of 8 meters per second. Okay, so we've got our baseball diamond again. And we've got our home and then our first base. Our baseball player is running. And we've got a few quantities here. Halfway to first base, so I'm kind of interested in the distance from player to first base. Player to second base is changing at a rate of, so I also need to know this distance here. And we saw from a previous example, that in the first part of this lecture, the first video, that we also needed to know this fact that the distance between bases is constant, so we gave it a name C. So we'll let x be the distance from player to first. Let y be distance from player to second, and let C be the, which is a constant here, distance between bases. So what am I given? I'm given that the distance from the player to second base is changing at a rate of 8 meters per second. So from player to second base, that distance is changing. So the derivative of y with respect to t is 8 meters per second. Okay, so I have to think about this though. When the player is at home plate, the distance from the player to second is pretty big. But when the player moves to first base, they're actually closer to second base than they were than they were at home. So this distance y is shrinking. The distance y is shrinking as the player runs. So the rate of change should be negative. So the derivative of y with respect to t should be negative 8 meters per second. But I'm still not done because this indicates that the derivative of y with respect to t is always negative 8 meters per second. But it's not. It's only at the precise moment when x is equal to 1 half C. So I'm just going to move this equal sign over a little bit because I want to indicate that we've got some notational conventions that I'm using here. Here I'm using again the fact that I've got a derivative and I'm looking at it evaluated at the moment when x is equal to 1 half c. So the derivative when x is equal to 1 half c is equal to negative 8 meters per second. So that's how we interpret the rate of change given in the problem. Let's look at the next example. A plane is flying at a constant speed of 300 kilometers per hour and climbing from a point P at an angle of 30 degrees. So we've got our point P. It's climbing at an angle of 30 degrees. And there's our plane flying in that direction. And so we want to interpret this 300 kilometers per hour. Well, that's a rate of change in the position. And if we measure the position from the plane to the point P, let's call that, let's call it Y. So let Y be the distance from plane to point P then this 300 kilometers per hour is the derivative of y with respect to t. So dy dt is equal to 300 kilometers per hour. And I also have to think, as the plane heads away from point P, this y is increasing in value. 
so the derivative is positive. So dy dt is positive 300 kilometers per hour. All right. So these examples again were to illustrate that when we're given a rate of change in a question, we can interpret it as the derivative of a quantity. First we have to declare what the quantity is and then when we say that the derivative is that, we also have to specify whether the derivative is actually positive or negative depending on whether the quantity so value is increasing or decreasing at that rate. All right, so now we're going to go and move on to the third thing we're going to need when we're solving related rates problems.